Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Um, today uh, I wanted to do the Arteza um, test picture. Um, just to, you know, put the teasers that I've got through the paces, see what they can do, how they, how they color. Um, if you haven't seen them, this, uh, this is a 72 set. They come in this nice little tin with three layers, you know, this plastic holder. Um, and the book I'm coloring in is my Fooding Spaziergang, mainly because um, the pictures are small, so it's um, easy and quick to finish one. I've already started just so that I could get a feel for the pencils. Um, yeah, this is all done with the 72 set of the Artezas. Um, I have a, another um, test picture that I started for the Black Widow pencils. Um, I want to do that after this. So I mainly wanted to just, you know, keep this this bright and, you know, because this is a spring book and I'm, my God, I'm feeling the spring already. And um, this flower I want to do in blue and maybe this one too, I don't know yet. So those are the three teasers that I picked out. 007. <laughs> 070. And... 068 I don't think ah, maybe so it's a bit hard to read um, unfortunately there's no uh, real light blue in their teasers wait let me show you the swatches those are the swatches I have and this is the, the lightest blue the 068 this is the one to me this is more medium medium blue and uh, there's also no real dark blue. This is the indigo one, 007. Um, it's not much darker than those two, just a tad. So maybe we, if we want to get something really dark, maybe we need to go back with black. But let's, let's see how those three colors perform. I want to have a color, uh, a flower that isn't too dark. Um, yeah, let's see, I usually, what I do is just you know start shading with my lightest one, like so. I like blocking in um, the color like that, and then after when blending, you always have a um, that color in the back. Cat hair. What I've already found with the Artezas is that at least on this paper, I don't know whether it's different on other papers, um, it's hard to get um, several layers down. Oh, wait, L let me just, you know, the cats are starting to fight right next to me. Oh, they're so bra such brats, they love each other, but sometimes you know, they're cats, so they just start to tear each other apart, even though they have um, slept peacefully next to each other uh, for hours. It's it's hilarious. Um, yeah, what I was about to say is that I've um, so far found um, that at least on this paper, it's, it's hard to layer them um, a lot, because the paper, I think they're pretty waxy, so the paper gets um, saturated pretty quickly and um, I don't know I think it's a bit hard to see but I think you can see it on on the darker here that it's not you know blended as nicely so let's put down the light blue everywhere I sometimes just do this um, in the beginning, just to remind myself where I want to put which color. So 
think the cats have calmed down now. No, they're just grooming each other. They're sleeping um, on a chair right next to me. So there's also probably no cat running through the picture because they're tired, sleepy. I think the light blue is a bit hard to see on, on camera. can just guess that it's there. But I want um, the lightest parts to be this very light blue. Is this still? Let's just assume this is also flower. They do keep a point nicely. The teasers. Okay. So, oh. what I also wanted to do is have some yellow in the in those small petals, and of course I put blue in there. So if I do that now, it just you know becomes green. So I have to rub it out with my trusty Derwent electrical eraser. I really love this thing. Very precise. Okay, so I want it pretty dark here in the middle. So Let's put the mid-tone in the mid-tone, as I said, because the light blue isn't isn't that light, the mid-tone is pretty dark. Um, um, we'll have to see how the whether I can get a good shading in there. I think we'll have to um, use some white. To blend. Maybe like so. And I want um, the rest of the petal just to have a dark outline. Like so. I'm a super slow colorist, so we'll see whether I can actually finish this flower <laughs> in this video. Um, I've uploaded um, a video with my first impressions when I got them. So this is me after I've you know already colored quite some time with them, as you can see, since the picture's almost finished. Um, they are pretty waxy, as I said. I'm really enjoying the pictures in this book so much. It's so small, it's just so quick to finish one. And I haven't had any um, problems with the paper, I really like it. It's only um, the, the teasers don't perform that well on it, and um, the Black Widows um, are actually um, even worse, I felt. Mm. I actually haven't uh, tried using Prismacolor in here, I think. So maybe it is just that the um, soft pencils don't work so well on this paper, because Pablo's and uh, Polychromos work pretty well. Today's a lovely lovely spring day oh, it's really started to feel that winter has had its brunt finally 
as you know, I've I've been coloring in the spring book since weeks now because I just wish to be for winter to be over. And when it gets lighter outside, um, like it does now, then it always inspire me. Uh, inspires me to to start coloring. What usually happens is that I um. Oh wait. Need something to protect the the other flowers. I always put something um, below my hand so I don't smudge it. Um, what usually happens is that I uh, I color through spring and summer quite a lot, and then when the days get shorter and darker, I often slow down or stop. Um, like when it gets, you know, towards autumn. And then for Christmas I have another. I'm in inspired again and want to do all the Christmas colorings. And then after Christmas I usually fall into a slump again. And don't color much. And then when it, the days get longer and lighter, I pick up coloring again and color through spring and summer. This has been how it was since I started coloring, I think in the summer of... Uh, in the early summer of 2015. Maybe it's also, you know, a seasonal depression thing. That when it gets so dark that I don't know, have the energy to be creative, I don't know. Like so. And the insides here are pretty dark too. Because the shadow of the flap is down here. The other st bent in the other direction, okay. So we can shade in the darkest. Oh yeah, it goes a bit darker. But I'm pressing moderately hard already. Because I know I want it to be dark here. I was um, I used very very light pressure for everything else. Oh, that's a very nice color. I like it when the blue is a bit warmer, like this. I think it's a bit too too light and a bit too warm to be a true indigo, even though this is what it's called. And the dark goes around here, the edges of the petals, especially the ones in the back, of course, are the darkest. Okay. I already start blending this a bit, because if I go over the petals with moderate pressure from this pencil it gets pretty dark already because this is a medium medium blue it's not as light as I would hope it be so I can use it to darken the edges too and I, I will need to use the white pencil for blending usually I take the I use the lightest color to blend everything in but this is too dark if I do that then everything gets just muddled and dark and there's no highlight in the petal anymore can see how dark, dark this gets. I'm really always on the lookout for pencils with um, dark, really dark shades and really light shades because that is what's missing in a lot of um, sets. And This is what makes you know your coloring really pop if you may take a I mean you're supposed to take a light, a medium and a dark shade, right? When coloring. But if um, the set only has basically variations of the same medium shade, then 
the contrast between the pencils isn't big enough to make the colors pop. And then you basically have to take uh, white and black or something to supplement, I don't know. It's easier if, um, like for the, with the Prisma colors, it has really um, light shades and also pretty dark shades. You just go around the edge of the petal um, and darken it in slowly and with each pass it gets darker on the outside and then blends in to lighten gradually towards the well, I can already feel that here in the middle it can't take much more color and the problem is that sometimes the I don't know whether I said that already sometimes the paper is already saturated with color if even before all the white grooves of the paper are um, smoothed out and filled out so it looks a bit uneven it's, it's really hard to burnish it when that happens again I don't know whether that's um, this paper it's uh, the paper is pretty smooth um, maybe it's better in other other books. And before I forget this, I want to. Um, Add in some yellow here in the, on these. I mean, I'm treating them as, as petals. You could completely make them yellow, I suppose. Just a bit. Like so. Yeah. Otherwise I'll forget that I want to do that if I don't put that, that in now. I really just love coloring flowers. It's easy if you have um, a couple of techniques down to do it. Um, it's basically always the same. And you can take all kinds of colors and always looks good. So I was so thrilled when Joanna Basford came out with a book titled World, titled World of Flowers and was just full of, full of flowers. Love this. You need to be careful not to go too um, close to the yellow because you need to have a space. Otherwise it'll turn green. I mean, I suppose if that's an effect you want, then that's fine, but I don't for this flower. Okay, and another pass with the medium one around, just to darken it more than the light shade could. That's why I have so so few um, pictures finished because finishing a flower like this just takes me an hour already 20 minutes into the video but I think when it's finished it'll it'll look nice then I just need to decide what to do with the second flower. Maybe vary the blues a bit. 
I kind of wanted to have it blue too, but if I do it in the same style, then they just blend together. Too much. Oh, too dark here. Yeah. Just blend this in. So yeah, I'm really happy that I got to um, try out the Artezas, even though um, they won't replace my usual colouring pencils. But, I mean, that would have been surprising if they would replace, you know, the artist grade pencils. I think for the price, um, you can get them at. They're very good quality. So, what are you doing at the moment? Which coloring projects are you working on? I um, I just finished um, the rose piece that you can find um, on my channel. And that took a long time. I think I sat on that for a week. Um, I had to take an evening where I did nothing else but work exclusively on that but really like how it turned out and um, now I want to finish those two um, test pages for the teasers and the and the black widows maybe do a video about that and after that I actually don't know what what I should color next I wanted to um, get into the Jasmine Becca Griffith collar along that is on Instagram at the moment, hosted by Sammy, collar and chat with Sammy, I think. Um, because I have um, have never colored a picture by Jasmine Becca Griffith, and I think it would be a, such a good opportunity. I don't actually have a, a book of her. But I have the Coloring Heaven Annual 2019, and since there was one issue uh, with Jasmine Beckett Griffith um, pictures that I unfortunately missed, but the annual has a couple. Oh, I went over that. No, the annual has a couple. I think three or four pictures from that issue. So I actually have, you know, those pictures to choose from if I want to get into the the color along. But it seems such a daunting, daunting task, such a big picture, and I don't think um, I could finish it while the, the color along is still running. I might just um, try and color the eyes in. As you may know, um, the Jasmine Brackett Griffith, um, the eyes she does for her, for her girls, they're very, very big and very expressive. And I, um, I think Sky, um, Dream and Color, um, Dream and Color is what what her channel is called. I think Sky um, showed um, a picture she did, and she she um, linked to a tutorial from from a lady who um, showed how to color um, eyes in on back. Jasmine Beckett Griffith pictures and it was just so stunning so maybe I'll just you know not finish the whole picture but just try out that one just that technique for the eyes because it looked gorgeous I don't know yet oh and yeah there are also the some pictures that are almost finished but just need you know just a little a little background or something I kind of want to go back and finish them too
So yeah, let's see. Now can you see that here? I think it's a bit hard to see, but it has some splotches of white in between. Um, and it's very hard, even by burnishing, to get it away. Um, and now the paper is completely saturated. It's very hard to, you know, now put shading or something in. I feel that the pencils are a bit hard to control like that because suddenly you can't um, put any more color on the paper even though from my other pencils I'm I'm, I'm used to that I I'm still should be still able to. So, I mean of course that's uh, also just a question of of habit. I mean I've colored so much with um, the Pablo's, the Prismacolors and the Polychromis that I'm very very used to how they handle um, and that bit of time I've spent with uh, Artisa so far of course doesn't um, compare to that so it's a bit you know, it'd be a bit unfair to expect me to be able to handle them like Pablo's like I, like I can the Pablo's or the Prismacolor I have another yellow. And then, you know, do, do not touch. Leave a bit of white and then I just, you know, blend this in with the white. There's almost nothing to blend anymore. Because the paper is completely saturated already. But just so that you don't get green. I think I saw that on one of Peter Hewitt's um, videos where she did it like that. really have to resist the urge to just blend over the whole length. Oh, but that looks pretty good. I'm still on uh, on the lookout. Um, I have decided that I wanted to that I want to color like a series of pictures um, and then frame them and then put them up in my office because my office is pretty pretty bare bones. I just have I think one picture up that I um, got as a gift um, a couple of years ago and then of course you know calendars and things like that. But um, no pictures and my colleagues they have. Um, like big pictures of I don't know abstract art and you know what people have have in the office after all, and I uh, work in an environment where I can't just bring my little Disney figures or my dragon or the the things that I usually would like to have around me. Um, so I thought, why not you know color something discreet, not a dragon you know even though if I want I want to. Um, but something that wouldn't, you know, um, be out of place in an environment like that. Um, I haven't decided what yet. I, I think, you know, some nature coloring, uh, maybe, you know, Hannah Carlson or something might, might be good. Um, then just, you know, pick a series of, of maybe three pictures and, uh, color them and frame them. And I got, I ordered some Strathmore toned tan paper because I've seen people um, do wonderful things on those and try that out. And if you have an idea for 
for a series of pictures I could I could colour in and then frame and hang in my office. Just let me know. I'm still undecided. But I think that'd be um, you know, a good way to give my office a bit of my personality while still adhering to you know, the office culture. Even though, you know, <laughs> big ass dragon would be something I'd really like to have up there. But that would provoke questions. What do you think? I think it needs to be a bit darker here. Let's see how the how the blending goes when I go with in with a white pencil. Um, I have a feeling that it might not work as well as I hope. But I think the the basic shading is is in. I think I'll just go over just a bit more with the blue just to give the white pencil something to actually blend with. Just, just a touch, the slightest pressure. I think you can't even see it on camera. It's barely visible to the eye, but um, you have at least some pigment down on the paper then the white can blend with that. I think I just want to have this dark like this. Like so. Okay, let's see. Let's start very very gently because if it turns out that it doesn't work then I have to add some more layers if I can. Okay, seems Seems to work out. The the white um, doesn't blend as nicely as uh, the Prismacolor that I usually use for that. And that's what I mean. That the blending isn't isn't perfect. Doesn't the colors don't want to mix themselves um, as much as I'm I'm used to from other pencils. So usually um, I layer a lot and then the last step is just, you know, blending, burnishing with a, with a very light color or white. And that usually dissolves um, the pigments and really makes a very nice effect. But here some of it doesn't move the pigment around very much. So some unfo unfortunate um, pencil strokes you can still can still see. And it's very hard now to put some some more color on top. I'm going with the darkest to really give it some shade. The indigo is pretty bright. It's not not a muted. Blue. It's very odd. Hmm. Oh, I mean, I really like this blue, but it doesn't doesn't really um, shade makes. Makes it almost pop a bit more than it should. Oh. Interesting. I really wonder when Rita Berman will come out, come out with a new book 
I've seen um, that she works in on something. She regularly posts sketches on her Instagram. Really excited about that. What that could be a new book. Really enjoy her book so much. But it's as I said, not only the artwork, but also that the the size of them. They're so small that you can just easily finish a project. Uh, here I'll just, you know, blend and burnish with the with the light blue because it's it's in the background. So it's darker. <laughs> the indigo is really it's really bright. Strange colour. I think I need to turn it down with some some brown at some point. Um maybe I'll go in after with some uh, Prismacolor Espresso just for the to give it more shadow um, I really have started to have some you know go-to colors um, like the Prismacolor Espresso for shading I think that's what um, Chris Chang does a lot so I always have a Prismacolor Espresso out just at the very end um, of when I'm finished with the picture and then I just go all around with the espresso and add some some more shadows on top um, that really helps give it more depth And I think I want to do that here too. Just because my dark blue isn't really doing the job. The same I use, um, the same goes for the Polychromous Indigo. That's what um, Peter Hewitt uses for shading a lot. So those two pencils I usually have and then use one of them depending on what I need. Halfway done. Even with, even to my eye, it's a bit hard to see the difference between the already blended um, burnished one here and the not blended burnished one here. It's, it's because this isn't um, completely smooth, so there isn't a big of a difference, sadly. It doesn't, um, it doesn't mean that it doesn't look good, it's just not as, um, it doesn't look as smooth as I'm used to. Okay. And have some white. I really enjoy um, that spring is coming and I can hear the birds singing. I don't know whether you can. So nice. Really wants makes me want to go out with with my coloring supplies, just sit in nature. But I think it's a bit too cold for that yet. Almost done. So we are 40 minutes into the picture and I'm almost done with one flower. And I hope you um, 
enjoy coloring this with me. It's uh, I really like those color and chat videos that other people do because um, I usually put them on and then start my own coloring and um, it's a bit like uh, like we have a have a buddy coloring event going or something. I uh, I sadly don't know anyone um, in my social circle who does adult coloring, so I can't um, just you know meet up with someone and sit down and just you know color. Uh, but because coloring, uh, you know, is is just a mechanical task. You don't need your brain. You can always do something else while coloring, right? Like you know, talking to someone or listening to someone. So I really like those those videos. Um, love watching them when I color myself. So I hope uh, that you have it the same. Mm. That you're sitting there and coloring something nice to right this moment. This doesn't get smooth. We're at the point that I don't even know whether I have blended this already or not. I don't think I have, but... Um, I'm not sure, because the difference isn't that big. I don't think I have because otherwise I couldn't wouldn't be able to put down the color like this. This is better. Okay, so let's go in with the white. I'm just really I'm pressing with the white I'm pressing really hard to push the pigment together and to seal the paper. I think only this one is left now. Give it a bit more shadow because it's in the background. Okay, like so. Now all that's left is to just give it more, a bit more definition with the dark. Just add that. Um, as you can see, you know, I haven't uh, sharpened the pencils at all. They, they really keep uh, keep their point very nicely, even though I feel they're pretty waxy. So that's uh, it's a really good thing. So you can make really nice strokes like that. Okay, and I think... Let me see what I have. Maybe we can just take in a teaser brown and see whether we can add some shading with that. So... See, there isn't really a very dark brown. Let me see whether I have the espresso here. That is the Prismacolor espresso. See how much darker this is than any of the browns here. Could go for the, but this is almost black gray. Now let's take this one. I really have to um, sort them into a into a case because if you have to go for the deeper ones, it's so easy to have them fall out. So 120 there. Charcoal. I have to say something very strange about the Atizas is that they smell a lot. Um, much more than any other pencil I've, I've used. It's a bit odd. So let me just um, sharpen this. Okay, 
now has a very nice point. And just go into the where the shadows are to just mute the not really muted indigo down. <laughs> Give it some definition. It's just a super important that you have a good range of light and dark in your picture. Ah, oh, see? That's way better now. I'm sorry that I sound a bit sniffly today. I think it's a combination of me still being a bit sick and uh, maybe it's already some, some hay fever. I mean, that's the price we pay for spring, right? Go right in here with the, with the shading. And here, just mute the indigo down. It's really just popping. Isn't it? And here. Just to give the impression that the petals are overlapping each other a bit. And oh, add some of those stripes in here as well. Rita has always already provided them for you. Like so. Okay, I think let, that looks pretty nice for now. Um, yeah, um, I think. I really like the teasers for, for what they are, for the price you pay for them. Um, as I said, they're not going to be a replacement to my artist grade um, pencils. So the Pablo's or the um, Prismacolor or the Polychromous. But if you don't want to spend you know that much money on coloring pencils, or if you need a cheaper set um, for on the go, then um, this is a really good pick. I really like um, the the box they come in um, because it's not one of those um, really long ones. Um, other, it it opts for you know like a medium thickness and a medium width. So it's something you can really easily pack. I feel um, so. Yeah, thank you very much for being with me on this first color and chat. I hope you enjoyed it and um, we'll see you until the next video. Bye!